Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel That Model Railway Guy and in today's video I'm going to be building a Dapple Mineral Wagon kit. These kits are very old now and do have a few fiddly parts but they're mostly quite simple to put together even for someone like me so they're a good start if you've never built a kit before. Additionally they're also quite cheap so if it all does go horribly wrong you haven't wasted too much money. Getting right to it then the first thing we're going to do is attach the brake lever to the side of the sole bar. The instructions actually say to attach the sole bar to the underframe first but I find it much easier to attach all the details first and then add it to the underframe. The pins do just push in but I add a little bit of glue just to be safe and of course don't forget that you need to repeat this for the other side as well. With that done we'll attach them to the underframe with a bit of glue. These just slot into place with the axles going in the gaps between the different sections here. Because they're old kits you might need to remove a little bit of flashing if it doesn't quite fit but I got lucky on this occasion and it all fit fine. The last bit of the brakes are these little pieces. Cut away the bit of plastic in the middle so that it looks like this, and then the ends slot into the gaps for them in the underframe. Again, you need to do this on both sides. And that's the underframe mostly complete, but before we start on the body I like to give this all a quick coat of black paint as it's easier to do now when you don't have to worry about it accidentally getting anywhere else. Also the buffer beams and the buffers need painting black too, I like to do this while they're still attached to the sprue as they are very small parts. Once the paint on those has dried we can start assembling the buffer beam. Cut the pieces off the sprue, be careful here because the buffers are very small and can ping off into the carpet never to be seen again if you're not paying attention. Next slot the buffers through the holes in the buffer beam. Uh, this is actually the most fiddly part of the entire build and to be honest I think it would have been much easier to have attached the beam to the rest of the underframe first and then put the buffers on afterwards. That's what I'd recommend if you're building this yourself so learn from my mistakes. There's also a tiny hook included in the kit too. It does have a very crude chain moulded onto it, but I've cut that off because it looks pretty bad by today's modern standards. And you could always add some fine chain yourself if you really wanted to. Again, this is a very small piece, so it's quite fiddly getting it all in place, but once you do, just dab a bit of glue on and it'll all set. Again, this needs to be repeated for the buffer beam on the other end too. And then we'll attach our buffer beams to the wagon. Make sure they're level with the underframe and not the floor of the wagon, so there's a bit of a lip for the body to sit on later. Speaking of the body, it's time for a bit more painting, and again I like to paint the ends and sides of the wagons before I glue it all together, so there's no risk of accidentally getting grey paint on the underframe. And make sure you don't forget to paint the doors too. Once everything is dry, you can fit the doors, which simply hook over the bottom of the wagon sides, and then they clip together once you close them. For a fairly old kit, it's a really nice feature to actually have working doors on these. Finally, it's time to start assembling the body and we're going to glue the end onto the lip of the buffer beam that we left earlier. Just add a line of glue along the lip and then add the wagon end, and as far as I know, it doesn't matter which way around it goes. If you've got a cutting mat like I have, it's a good idea to use it to make sure your sides are all square as it makes everything much easier going forward. And the first piece of the body always feels very flimsy to start off with, but it gets much stronger the more you add. We'll do one of the sides next, and when you put down your line of glue, don't forget to leave a gap for the door if you still want to be able to open it. Stick it in place, and then we'll add the opposite end in the same way that we did the first one. Then it's just a case of adding the final side and there we go, we've pretty much got an entire wagon. We'll set that to one side for the moment to let it all dry properly and while it's doing that we can start work on the coal load. Now this dapple wagon kit actually comes with a moulded load that you can choose to add. It's not amazing but it's certainly not hard to improve. First we'll give it a coat of black paint and if you're not fussed about it looking incredibly realistic you could just leave it here. However I'm going to add some coal on top from the Hatton's loads range just to make it look a little bit better. This tub cost me less than a fiver and it will give you plenty of coal to do loads of wagons. They also do very small sample packs for under a pound too which could be great if you only want to do a single wagon load. Once the paint is dry I cover it in PVA glue as you can see here and then sprinkle some coal all over the top. You want to get a good even coverage but don't worry if there's any tiny gaps as the black paint underneath will disguise those. When the glue has dried you can tip off the excess coal and rather than this going all to waste you can easily collect this up to use on another wagon. 
Back to the wagon itself, and with the body firmly secure, it's time to add transfers. And amazingly, this kit comes with transfers included. Unfortunately, they only give you one set of numbers, so if you do have more than one of these kits, they'll all be the same number. Or you can buy another set of transfers with lots of different numbers if that really bothers you. As you can see, I cut out the transfers one by one and let them soak in water before using a cocktail stick to move them off the backing paper and onto the wagon itself. Once the water dries, the transfer will be stuck in place, so make sure you've got it in the right position before that happens. I'll be honest, I'm not very good at doing transfers and I always panic a bit, but as you can see, it's fairly simple and it all works out fine in the end. As for where to place the transfers, I just looked at pictures of these types of mineral wagons online to see roughly where they should go. Now it's time to add the wheels. We do actually get metal wheels in this kit, which is really nice, especially considering the price. And these just simply slot into place in the holes in the back of the axle boxes. You will have to bend the axle boxes out ever so slightly to get them in, but not by much, so don't worry about breaking anything as long as you're being careful. And then just make sure the wheels spin without getting stuck, and as you can see, I've got a very nice free-running wagon. Finally, we'll add the tension lock couplings to the wagon. There's two little bits of plastic here that clip together which form a mount for the actual coupling, and then the actual coupling itself just clips into that mount. Then the whole mount can be pushed onto the holes on the underside of the wagon. I'll be honest, the actual couplings themselves are a bit rubbish and stiff, so I'll probably end up replacing these with some of Dapple's more modern slimline tension lock couplings in the future. Finishing touch is to add the coal load, but underneath I like to add a little bit of lead weight as these wagons are very light, and I found that adding some weight stops them from derailing. Once the weight is in place, add the coal load on top to hide it, and that is our wagon complete. This is a really fun little kit in my opinion that's nice and simple to build, and it doesn't cost much either, so if you want a rake of them like I have here, it's much cheaper to build a few of these kits than it is to buy several ready to run wagons. Anyway, that's it for this video, I do hope you've enjoyed it, and if you have, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notifications in the future. Let me know in the comments if you want to see me build any more kits like this, and as always, thank you so much for watching. Bye!